Hi everyone, this short video is about uh, quantitative project risk management and in this uh, particular recording we will talk about scheduling. You know, in some projects we are uncertain about uh, the duration of tasks. For example, uh, for task A, we have been told that uh, it can take from 5 to 10 days to finish. So a standard Gantt chart uh, cannot tell us uh, much about this uh, project because critical pass method uh, is uh, used in standard uh, scheduling practice. Uh, so if this particular task takes five days, it might not be on the critical path, but if it takes 10 days, it can become critical. Uh, that's when a probabilistic scheduling is very useful and at risk is a powerful tool uh, in connection with Microsoft, Microsoft project to conduct uh, probabilistic scheduling. We will follow a six uh, step approach in this uh, video. First, we need to develop uh, the model logic in Microsoft Project and then uh, export it into Excel. Then we define outputs and inputs, and then set the uh, simulation settings, run it, and finally analyze the results. So let's start with a very simple scheduling task and uh, do the probabilistic scheduling. The first step is to develop the model logic. You can consider this very simple example on the right side of the screen. As you can see, there are activities A to G in this network. Six of them are uh, following a triangular distribution. It means that uh, there is uncertainty in durations of these activities. Uh, for example, for A, a minimum of 10 days, uh, a maximum of 15 days, but it is most likely to take us 12 uh, days to complete this task. Activity F, uh, again, there is uncertainty in its duration. It follows a uniform distribution with a minimum value of 20 days. And in the worst case scenario, it can, it can be completed in 30 days. So let's uh, develop the model logic. Uh, first activity is activity A. And uh, the duration for this activity uh, the most likely uh, duration is 12 days. The second activity, B, most likely duration 10 days. And the predecessor for this uh, activity is the first one, activity A. Then we have activity C. Most likely duration for this one is uh, 20 days. And the predecessor is the second activity or B. Then we do the same process for all tasks to develop the model logic. As you can see, the model logic is now complete. We have entered all tasks with their uh, durations uh, in the Microsoft project and now ready to run. We can enter a summary task for this uh, model, so let's do that. We can name this summary tag, tag, uh, task as project. And please remember to indent all of the subtasks under the umbrella of this summary task. So in the calculations for duration for project, all of them are calculated. So now we can go to project tab and calculate the project. As you can see, uh, without considering the uncertainty for duration of different tasks, the project uh, will take 56 days to complete. Uh, you have different options. For example, in view, you can highlight uh, critical tasks and as you can see there is there are only four of them uh, but again uncertainty is not taken into consideration also for uh, GAN chart you can highlight uh, the critical pass in red before uh, exporting this project into uh, 
Excel to use at risk for probabilistic scheduling. We should save it. And then we can open Excel. We have at risk tab activated already. So in the menu bar, there is this option of project. When you select this, import MPP file is the first option. And we can use uh, this to recall our model. It was saved already, so I can select the file and it will be imported. A few questions uh, will be asked by Excel before uh, completing the import. So about the settings, we are happy with defaults. And it asks if we want to save the workbook. Uh, yes. It is uh, the best practice to save it in the same place that you have already saved your uh, MS project uh, file because these two files will be linked together. So any change you make in one of them uh, will modify the second file. Okay, now uh, we are ready. As you can see, all the data uh, about our tasks are here, and we have this uh, standard Gantt chart on the right side of the screen. So let's start. The second step in our uh, quantitative uh, risk analysis is to define outputs. In any scheduling problem, the most important uh, parameter is the duration of project. So we can uh, select uh, duration of project and uh, add output to this in at risk. Add output is in the menu bar. We can select it. And it asks you for a name for this output. And it suggests a default name, project duration. OK. The second output is the finished date of the project. And we can follow the same process for that. Now, in the third step of our quantitative risk analysis, we need to define distributions for input uh, variables. In other words, we need to define the uncertainty that we have with regard to durations. For example, for activity A, uh, we can select this one and then press define distribution in the menu bar to uh, define different parameters of a triangular distribution. Among the common uh, probability distributions, we select triangular and then uh, we can enter three point estimates of this distribution in the window. In the given network, uh, the minimum duration for activity A is 10 days, uh, most likely 12 days, and the maximum value is 15 days. So these are uh, parameters for our uh, first task and then we press OK. As you can see, the syntax uh, has been already changed uh, to reflect the uncertainty we have uh, for the duration of activity A. We should do the same thing for other tasks uh, to complete this third step of quantitative risk analysis. Activity F, for example, has a uniform distribution, so we can define it selecting this option, uh, uniform, and the minimum value is 20 days for this one, and the maximum value is 30 days. Now we have completed uh, the third step, and uh, we are ready to conduct uh, the simulations for our model. As you can see, I have set the number of iterations to 5,000, and now we can see the results. For example, for project duration, the median value is 57.3 uh, days in the summary statistics table on the right. And uh, for finish date, again, we can uh, see the results in the window. As you can see, the median value for uh, project finish date is uh, 15th of uh, July, and it can be found in the summary statistics table on the right side of the screen, or uh, can be read from uh, top of the sliders. So it is 15th of July. The real power of at risk is in uh, probabilistic scheduling, when we have uncertainty in duration of different tasks in a network of project. So 
we can use this function and uh, you can press uh, project option menu bar and then charts and reports when you select this there is option for probabilistic Gantt chart and we can select this option and there are different parameters to set uh, when you select this option for example uh, the start date we can use the fifth percentile for that one finish date we can select 95th percentile and the difference between the two gives you 90 percent confidence interval in your decision making there is very important option here we should always check this option display critical index and it shows you when there is uncertainty in duration of different tasks in your project What's the probability of a particular task to become critical in different what-if scenarios? So we always check this one. We can go to the second tab, Tracked Output. And as you can see, which output uh, we want to track can be defined here. And now we are after project duration. And uh, the sensitivity type that we want to use, when you check this box you can select change in output mean correlation or regression in this example we go for correlation and then press ok it takes a very short time to show the probabilistic Gantt chart and uh, let's uh, talk about results in here critical index in uh, column m it shows uh, the percentage that a task can be on the critical path. Two activities, A and G, are always critical, and it makes sense because uh, they are a starting point and finishing point of the project. Two other activities, B and C, they have a great potential to be critical based on the duration and relationship with other tasks. And we have this interesting activity, F, that can be critical in uh, some particular circumstances, there is 7% chance for activity F to be critical. Another important result that we have is in column L, correlation or uh, the relationship between input variables that are different tasks for this project and the output uh, measure, which is our project duration. We have different values in this one, and as you can see, if this value is close to zero, it shows a very weak relationship between input variable and output. And if it is close to one, it shows a very strong relationship. For example, activity C as an input, its duration has a very strong relationship with the duration of the whole project. And that makes sense because activity C is one of the longest uh, tasks in our model. But for others, for example, activity E, the duration of this activity is not uh, that effective on the project duration. In other words, project duration is not very sensitive to changes in the duration of activity E. And the correlation index here is like uh, 2% only. And activity G is again has a sort of a strong relationship with the project duration with a correlation index of uh, 0.5. Now we have completed the last step of quantitative risk analysis, which was uh, interpretation of results. Uh, only one small thing has been left. Uh, as you can see in this probabilistic Gantt chart, we have some blue bars. These are deterministic uh, durations for different tasks without any uncertainty in it. So it is like a standard Gantt chart. The red bars, the solid uh, red bars, uh, they show the range between earliest possible start date and latest possible finish date. For example, for this activity, this is the earliest uh, possible start date and the latest uh, possible finish date is up to here. Pink bars, 
uh, they show the range between the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile for each task and we have two diamonds on each of bars which shows the median value for start and finish of each task. So it was uh, thus a step in our quantitative risk analysis and uh, it was about the interpretation of results in at risk. Please watch other videos on my uh, YouTube channel about quantitative risk analysis. Thank you for your attention.